The Bank of Canada has dropped their policy rate in two consecutive months and for the seventh consecutive month we've seen an increase in inventory both on Vancouver's east side and west side when it comes to the detached market. We also saw a month-to-month -month decrease in variance in price point of a tune of 6% in both of these categories as well. I am Kyle Mark, your Vancouver Realtor. We're going under the most comprehensive detached market update now that we have the data in for July. So this is your most up-to-date thorough market analysis. We're going to go into inventory, sales, active inventory, medium price points, and how your asset or potential asset compares to the Fraser Valley as well as the rest of Greater Vancouver. We're also going to be highlighting the winners and losers in both Vancouver's east side and Vancouver's west side housing markets so that you know whether you're a seller or a buyer, when is the time to act. I know that some of you at home may be wondering why these consecutive rate drops are not improving the sales conditions here around Greater Vancouver and it's just because it, there isn't enough. There's not enough meat on the bone at this juncture. Andrew Lees, who's an economist with Greater Vancouver Realtor State, the trend of buyers remaining hesitant that began a few months ago continued in the July data despite a fresh quarter percentage point cut to the Bank of Canada's policy rate. With the recent half percentage point decline in the policy rate over the past few months and with so much inventory to choose from, it's a bit surprising transaction levels remain below historical norms as we enter the midpoint of summer. For me personally, I don't think it's surprising whatsoever. When you look at what these consecutive point reductions do, it's about $15 for every $100,000 of lending. So now with two consecutive months, that's $30 for every $100,000 of lending. It's not a lot to incentivize buyers to get up and get moving. I know that for myself, I've had a huge pipeline of around 15 buyers and a lot of them are still wanting wanting to see more rate cuts in the future before they want to jump into the market. And that's why we've had this steadily increase of inventory since December. It has been continuing to charge upwards and sales are not keeping up with that. And this is pretty much no matter what category you're looking at or what area across the border Greater Vancouver, but specifically for Vancouver's east side and Vancouver's west side detached market, we can see that there is a huge divide between the inventory and the solds. And that is important for you as a buyer because that means the conditions are ripe and ready for you to get into a good product because you have a lot more selection and uh, there's just more downward pressure on those price points. So what we're going to do now is just bring up some of this data in a very easy digestible way for you to really understand what is going on and we're going to start here with the median sales pricing and this is uh, the blue here is for Vancouver West. Vancouver East is the gray, the Fraser Valley is yellow, and green is Greater Vancouver as a whole. And why I wanna bring this up on screen is just so that you can see what's going on, how you can compare the asset classes to the rest of Vancouver first off, the Fraser Valley, and then Vancouver's East Side and Vancouver's West Side. So what we have here right now is just the median price point, and this is going back to 2022. And you can see here, there hasn't been, uh, essentially across all areas here, there hasn't been a huge increase in pricing. Pricing has remained very, very stagnant over the last couple of years, uh, which is good. I mean, with the history of Vancouver detached markets, we know that every couple of years, pricing remains to be stagnant and then it starts to move to the uptrend. So we know that it's been soft for a while. You can see the pricing here um, just isn't very, very strong when it looks at uh, appreciation over the last couple of years. So if you haven't gotten into the market and you've been waiting, you can see that just in terms of price point, there hasn't been a huge deviation uh, over the last couple of years. So this is something that you would want to take some stock into and really evaluate your home buying needs, especially if you're looking in the detached markets because there hasn't been a huge increase on these price points. If we jump over to some of these, uh, the new listings here, and this is what we can see here, and this is going back from 2022, uh, we can see that there's been uh, some significant increases over the last couple of years in terms of inventory. As we take it to the total inventory numbers, this is where things really start to jump out. And on the right-hand side, you're gonna see the variances from year to year. So across Greater Vancouver, Fraser Valley, Vancouver East, Vancouver West, there has been all double-digit increases in terms of total inventory. Greater Vancouver as a whole has seen almost a 25% increase in terms of total inventory. Fraser Valley, just under 20%. Vancouver East takes the cake at a 25.8% 
increase in terms of total inventory for detached. So this is something where you're really wanting to take notice of when you can see that these inventory levels have increased so much. Vancouver West, a little bit more at 11.3%. How does that translate into new listings as a whole? You know, very similar. Uh, these numbers here uh, paint a similar uh, picture. Greater Vancouver, 22.6% increase across Vancouver. If you're looking homes outside of Vancouver East and West, there has been another big jump in inventory Fraser Valley just under 12% Vancouver East 25.5% here and then Vancouver West 18.9% increase uh, from those years and then you can even see from 2023 uh, new listings compared to 2022 there was another big jump off you'll also notice that from down here in 2023 compared to 2022 another substantial increase in new listings and uh, from 2022 over the last two years you can just see with this bar graph it makes it really easy to digest that we've seen some big improvements in terms of new inventory especially across greater vancouver the vancouver east side and west side markets have had some steady growth but greater vancouver has had a huge run of new listings over the last couple years so as we get over to the sales data for the month of July. You can see that it's been very, very much stagnant in terms of what has been going on year to year. You can see that in 2023, there was some massive amounts of movement uh, in 2023. Uh, the beginning part of 2023 was a, a strong part of the calendar year before it started to slow down with these mounting interest rate hikes. But from 2023 to 2024, there hasn't been a big change in terms of sales and uh, in a little bit here when I pull up uh, some more data with the winners and losers between uh, Vancouver's east side and west side you're going to see the divergence between inventories going up and sales going down as well if we look on days on market which is something that is uh, important as well you can see that there has been some big changes year over year uh, you know 66 percent days on market greater Vancouver in the green 35 percent in the Fraser Valley, 53% Vancouver's east side, and then Vancouver's west side, just a 7.1% increase. But if you still look at it as a whole, even with the increase from year to year, you're still looking at on average selling a property uh, within three weeks. So I would say that is still very strong market condition. If you can sell a property within three weeks on average, I think you're doing really, really great. So these aren't earth shattering numbers in any case, but did want to make you all aware and just show you what things have looked like over the course of the last couple of years in days on market and it has stayed pretty much very uh, similar as we get into the winners and losers for vancouver's east side and vancouver's west side markets perspectively i wanted to throw up another quote here from andrew lees and he states with the overall market experience balanced conditions and with a healthy level of inventory not seen in quite a few years price trends across all segments have leveled out with very modest declines occurring month over month while it remains to be seen whether softening prices and improving borrowing costs will entice buyers to purchase as we head into the fall market. It's worth noting that it can take a few months for improvements to borrowing costs to materialize into higher transaction levels. In this respect, it's still early days, so we will watch the market for signs of transaction activity picking up in the months ahead. So as I mentioned off the top, I still think we are looking at next spring for when the market is really going to potentially get into a more competitive marketplace. There's still going to be a need for for you know four more 25 basis point market drops for buyers to get excited because right now we have a case study of seven consecutive months of inventory sales are not keeping up and pricing is stagnating or even starting to drop a little bit due to the increase in inventory so let's pull up vancouver's west side the detached market i'm going to be giving you an overview of what we are seeing these are these advanced stats that uh, you can't get on any public domain these are ones that i pay for and what i like about them they'll really break down the price bands here on the left with the sub areas and give us some really good data to pull from so overall on vancouver's west side the detached market is in buyer market conditions sitting at 10 percent homes are selling on average three percent below list price the most active price band is between that 2.5 to 2.75 million dollar mark 25 percent sales ratio obviously these are going to be very entry level lots building lots on vancouver's west side if you're a buyer looking on vancouver's west side looking for good opportunity based on the data homes between 5.5 million and 
six million. So if you have that chunk of change laying around, make sure you give me a call. All my information is in the description below and we can sort you out and looking in areas such as Arbutus, Mackenzie Heights and South Granville. If you are a seller selling homes in Kitsilano, South Camby and up to four bedroom properties are the ones that are most competitive right now. As we now look at this 13 month market trend line here, this black line just denotes the last 13 months in data points. You can see in August and December, that is when pricing was sitting right around that $4 million mark. Obviously in December is when we saw this pinch point in inventory at 390, but we have almost dropped $500,000 since December where the average median price point on Vancouver's West side is now sitting at 3.4 million. So if you're looking for opportunity, you can see that there has been a drop down in price point, many small little ones, but accumulating to almost $600,000. So this is where I was talking about, and it's going to ring true on Vancouver's East side, these red dotted lines here, you can see in December, there was inventory of just 390. It has now jumped up to 661. So you can see here these several small increases in inventory and the sales here in the blue just about doubled from December. But you can see this gap here is definitely widening. So as a buyer, you're wanting to operate in these conditions when there's these pinch points here, that's a good place for you as a seller. With that in mind though, there's always deviations in the marketplace. Just because this data shows a certain price point or a certain sales to active ratio doesn't mean every area is going to follow that. So if we look at the winners and losers, when we look at the communities, places as a seller that you want to be confident in if you're looking to sell is in Kitsilano, 20%, very strong balanced market conditions, almost getting into seller market conditions. And then Southwest Marine at 18%. And then South Camby is the only one sitting in seller market conditions at 25%. So if you are in those areas, make sure you reach out for a home evaluation. I can provide you one. It's in the description below, but keep in mind, there isn't a lot of data in South Camby. Yes, it's at 25% seller market conditions, but there was, that was based off of just two sales and eight inventory in the area. If you're looking at areas with good inventory at a low sales ratio, Arbutus, 4%, very low buyer market conditions, only one sale with 24 inventory. And uh, we can see that point gray, 8% with just six sales and 71 inventory. And then South Granville, 4%, heavy buyer market conditions, 83 inventory, just three sales. So those are areas as a buyer you really want to focus on. As we now get into the price bands to see where is a good opportunity point or a launch pad for you as a seller. As mentioned, if you're anything under that $3 million mark on Vancouver's West side, you are in those seller market conditions uh, in terms of the price band from 175 all the way up to 2.75. You're pretty much in seller market conditions. You pop back in again between 3 million to 3.5. That is a really nice price band there at sitting at 24%. So we know that in that 3 million to 3.5, there will be more selection. We can see there's 50 55 inventory based off of 13 sales. And as mentioned, that 5.5 to $6 million mark, 49 options, just one sale sitting at 2%. And anything 7.5 million and greater is uh, even worse. 131 inventory with two sales. So these are some of the areas that you're wanting to key in if you are looking at product on Vancouver's west side. Uh, to finish this out here, we can see that the sale price dropped from 3.634 million from the month of June down to 3.4 million a drop of 6% and sales dropped 18%. The days of market essentially remain the same at 15. Flying over to the east side market on Vancouver's east side. We know that the east side detached market is faring a little bit better at 16% sales ratio. So strong balanced market conditions where homes are selling just 2% under list price. Most active price band, again, it's always going to be this way. In that entry market, 1.75 to 2 million, very heavy seller market conditions at 32%. Buyer's best bets, anything between that 2.75 and 3.5 million mark is a good entry point. That is also a great budget to find something very decent on Vancouver's east side. So not only can you get the benefit of finding a nice home in that price band, but you're going to be able to negotiate on those price points. And then Collingwood, South Vancouver and up to two bedroom properties on the detached side of things are the best areas for you as a buyer, as a seller, selling homes in Knight, Maine, 
and three to four bedroom properties are right now the most competitive markets. If we look at overall pricing, we can see that in the month of October of last year, the average home on Vancouver's east side was at 2,045,000. It's now at 1.964. So not a massive drop as compared to Vancouver's west side. As we make our way over to the 13 month trend line, we can see that actually last month was when we saw the pinnacle of pricing on Vancouver's east side over the last 13 months, just under 2.1 million. It has now dropped 6% to that 1,964. Similarly, again, seven months, we see that in December in the red here, 310 active inventory. And then that is now jumped up to 571 in July. Sales in that same time frame went from 48 to 90. But this gap between red and blue is widening. So it's not pinched down. This is a good area for you to be as a buyer. As we jump into some of the communities, uh, as mentioned, 16% on average, strong seller market conditions. As a seller, we know that Grandview Woodland, Hastings, Hastings Sunrise, Killarney, Knight Street, and Maine all are in seller market condition. So there's still a lot of communities on Vancouver's east side if you are a seller that are still performing very, very well. Strathcona as well, sitting in heavy balance market conditions, jumping into or almost jumping into seller market conditions. If you are a buyer looking to take advantage of some inventory, Collingwood sitting at 6%, there's 117 inventory. I know I've mentioned this the last several months. A lot of these are these huge land assemblies that are really messing up the sales rate ratio in that area. Uh, Mount Pleasant, surprisingly, sitting at 11% with just nine inventory and one sale. And South Vancouver, 7%, 55 inventory with four sales. If we look at price bands as a seller, you know that anything from 1.5 up until that 2.25 mark are strong, healthy conditions for you as a seller to take advantage of. And then it jumps up into that 2.5 to 2.75 mark at 31%. So strong seller market conditions in this 2.5 to 2.75. And this is why I really like these price bands because if you can see here, this 2.5 million to 2.75 and 19% sales ratio. So getting into seller market conditions, but as soon as you get past that 2.25 million, upwards of 2.5, you jump into this weak 6% sales ratio for whatever reason. So 81 inventory, five sales. This is where you really want to focus as a buyer. And then you can see again, as you jump into that 2.5 million to 2.75, you're back into heavy seller market conditions at 31%. So the 2.25 to 2.5 million, and then anything above 2.75 million in Vancouver's East side, you have a lot of selection. You should have some strong negotiating power on those areas as well. Finally, finishing things out here, days on market jumped up 122% from nine days to 20 days. We know that the pricing dropped 6% and uh, we know that uh, the overall solds did have an increase of 22%, which is quite rare. Uh, most municipalities have continued to see their sales drop again with this uh, recent month. But uh, on Vancouver's east side, we saw an increase in activity in the month of July. Where does August go from here now that we have this data? I think August is going to be another slow month. I believe that solds are going to drop a little bit. Pricing may drop off a little bit. Inventory is going to stay stagnant. And we know that historically on the real estate calendar that people are not focusing in on real estate, especially families on this detached market update specifically. Families have already made their moves. They don't want to make and move their children in the middle of a school year. They want to be all set up for September, especially if they're moving to a new school district. What will the all important fall market bring? Usually the second busiest market in the calendar. I do think we're still several rate drops before things are going to start getting more competitive and for this inventory to be taken upwards. September 4th is the next date on your calendar that you want to be aware of. The Bank of Canada is going to have their next policy rate announcement and I believe they are going to drop it again. But like I said, 25 basis points is just not enough. So don't worry, I will be keeping you all updated with any rate decisions that are coming as well as any other real estate news. Something that is going to be beneficial though, we know that with some of these changes to the residential tenancy board has made, there was a minimum of a four month notice given for vacant possession. They
they have since redacted that and pushed it back down to three months and why that is significant is a lot of buyers were starting to have issues with a minimum of a four month vacant possession a lot of rate holds would expire after 120 days so what buyer is going to want to offer on a potential tenanted property if your rate hold is not going to survive it's a little win that some common sense prevailed here i don't think they should have really touched any of those notices given because it really hurts a landlord when trying to dispose of a property but if you are a seller that is something that's really important to know and as well as a buyer because i know that there was a few buyers that i was speaking with that were disappointed and i know buyers were starting to worry a little bit about having more competition on properties that were owner occupied or vacant because if everyone who needed a mortgage couldn't go after tenanted properties anymore there would be more competition in those other types of asset classes and then on the opposite end of the spectrum if you're owning a tenanted property a lot of buyers would now disengage from looking at a listing and focus on a different property instead so i'm hoping that that's going to bring a little bit more clarity but there's just been so many changes here to the market here across canada and specifically vancouver that it's going to need need some time for the landscape to play out we have land use changes we have tenancy changes we have interest rate changes all these things that are going around an economy that's still trying to get out of inflation so I think it's still going to be a little bit of a rocky road but no matter where you are if you're a seller and you have good property you're going to be able to move it if you're a buyer looking for a deal, you're still going to be able to get into something that at the end of the day, no matter what the conditions are, people are always going to have to buy and sell real estate. But just make sure you do that with me. My information is in the description below. So whether you're looking to buy, sell, invest, or relocate to my beautiful city, Vancouver, I'm Kyle Mark, your Vancouver realtor, and I will see you on the next one.